National Recreation Trail. Let's give that a shot. What a far cry from the desert we were hiking in just uh, a few miles ago, essentially. We're just leaving the town of Paisley, which is actually a really great town stop. And now we're back on trail out of the desert, heading up into the mountains along the Fremont National Recreation Trail. I gotta say, after 160 miles of desert, ready for some nice green mountains. Smells like it. This pine smells so good. Yeah. You know, 160 miles in, essentially, this is our first legitimate trail. Looks like we'll get most of the climbing done of this section just today. Yeah, 2,700 foot climb today. And that's the Chewbacca River down there. Chewakan River. I like Chewbacca River better though. number of degrees today. Does your van have a name? Yeah, Big Linda. Big Linda? Uh, my mom, I remember when I was really super small, my mom had a friend named Big Linda. My pickup name was Big Karen, so we just went with Big Linda. Thing is massive. Wow, look at the root system down below, too. Look at this. Man, there's actually some overhang on that, too. Wow, that is massive. All my roots. Yeah, and it's. I want to mark this as a water source. <laughs> yeah, right. I was going to say you should stand in there for, for scale, but I mean, clearly, you don't want to do that. Don't let go, Donnie! <laughs> and check this out, you got this trail marker here. Clearly melted from the fire. This section of the Fremont National Recreation Trail also overlaps with the Oregon Timber Trail, which is a 670 mile mountain biking route. So far we haven't seen any mountain bikers. Interestingly, I haven't been able to pinpoint what mountain range this actually is. It's not marked on the USGS maps or the US Forest Service maps. And after Googling a couple of the highest peaks along this ridgeline, I still can't determine the name of this mountain range. This area has been impacted by several fires over recent years, but despite that, it's still a pretty enjoyable hike for us, especially after the sand and the sagebrush 
of the low desert. Oh, okay, I see it, yeah. Right up there. Looks like a pro tip in the making. Right. Your words of wisdom for hiking the ODT. Just 300 more foots to the top. First patch of snow. No, there's actually fuel in it. This is it, Morgan Butte, 7,234 feet. It's a lookout tower here, but these things are pretty much always locked up. There's a bottle of Gatorade in there. Powerade. Somebody's been here recently. Yeah, no kidding. Well, this is the highest point we've been so far in the ODT. Getting four deep cell batteries in there. Pretty sweeping view from here. You got the Chewakin River down there. We've been following the crest of the mountains here along the Fremont Trail all day today. That's uh, Summer Lake over there. The Dried lake bed. That's where we started the day. The southern, I guess, uh, the end of the lake bed over there. And then uh, the town of Paisley is down there. And way off in the distance, you can see Diablo Peak, Diablo Rim. And then this is Diablo Rim extending down the valley here in Lake Abbott. Dried lake bed over that way. And uh, from here, we'll be following the rest of this crest of these mountains here to the town of Lakeview. There's actually a fire on the rim there. That's actually pretty close to where we're going to be going next, and that really wasn't visible just a minute ago. It's a little disconcerting. Well, I gotta say, that was the first time I've seen a fire from a fire lookout. I haven't seen all that many interesting rocks so far. It's mostly been obsidian along the route. Now that we're up here in the mountains, finding different stuff. And there's actually a lot of, like, agate. And some greens that I'm not quite sure what this is. Normally the greens I find in Arizona are like a malachite, but I really don't think that's something they, they find here in this area. But it's definitely a lot more interesting than obsidian. It's a nice agate right there. That's pretty neat. That's the kind you cut and polish. And this one's pretty cool too. Wow, look at the banding on that one. It's 
pretty nice agate. Taking my time looking for rocks here. A little sidetracked, first interesting rocks I've seen on this trip. Pretty much spent the whole winter rock hounding in Arizona, finding all sorts of cool gems and minerals, exploring old mines. So anytime I get a chance to look at interesting rocks from a different part of the world that I haven't been, it's hard for me to just mosey right on without at least stopping for a few minutes and checking it out. Uh, it's one of those ones you spin the wheel or whatever. The frog's like, I make one noise and I do it all day long. Well, we get about a mile to our water source and we're gonna fill up water and probably start looking for camp shortly after that call it a day and that's pretty crazy you got a dust storm blowing in the valley here and the wind is coming from summer lake to the north so uh, more than likely that's blowing in off the dried lake bed that we were basically camping along last night at the uh, summer lake hot springs resort that's wild to see Here we go, this is Round Pass Spring. So it looks like we got plenty of water there. Then uh, I think after this, we'll probably be looking for a place to camp, probably over by Round Pass somewhere over that way. And this one's probably gonna be a pain to collect from. It's not that deep. There is water. It's what you call hiker twister. Cool as a mountain stream. And this is Round Pass, 6,800 feet in elevation. And we're looking for a place to camp right here, pretty much on Round Pass, and there's this big pile of bear scat, and it's soft. That's probably less than a day old bear scat. Perfect. Right by uh, where we're gonna camp. Well, it looks like this is going to be camp for tonight. Right under this huge, huge pine. 